a Bayes Nash equilibrium is just like a Nash equilibrium, except we apply this to Bayesian games and we expect rather than players best responding to what the other player is doing, we expect that players will best respond to what other players are doing given what they know. So let's go back to this example that we had seen earlier, where nature decides the type of player one. So player one is of type zero with one third probability and type 12 with two thirds probability. And the players play this game where player one chooses between A and B and player two chooses between C and D. And it's the type of player one that determines the payoff that player one gets when AC is played. So in this case, in a Bayes Nash equilibrium, player two best responds to what player two thinks player one would do as a function of player one's type, given that they know that the probability of x being 12 is two thirds and probability of x being zero is one thirds. Note that when we write down the Bayesian normal form of this game, this takes into account what player two knows because it averages out the payoffs according to one third probability on type zero and two thirds probability on type 12. So Bayes-Nash equilibrium would be equivalent to writing down the Bayesian normal form of a game and just looking for the regular Nash equilibrium that we're used to looking for. So if we wanted to find the Bayes-Nash equilibrium of this game, we could simply look at this game and solve for the Nash equilibrium. So let's go through this game and do our usual routine for finding a Nash equilibrium and see how we would interpret that in the extensive form. And that'll give us some idea of how one would generally go about solving these types of Bayes-Nash equilibria. So let's look at this. If we go back to the extensive form here, when player one's type is zero, playing B zero yields a payoff of six versus zero when player two plays C and yields a payoff of six versus three when player two plays D. So no matter what player two does, if player one's type is zero, then playing B zero strictly dominates A zero. So if player one's type is zero, player one should not play a zero. And because of that, we see that either of the strategies that involve playing a zero are dominated. So a12 b0 dominates a12 a0, 10 is bigger than eight, four is bigger than three. So this strategy is dominated. Similarly, b12 b0 yields six versus four that b12 a0 yields when player two plays c, or six versus five when player two plays d. So again, B12, B0 dominates B12, A0. So this strategy is dominated. Now once we notice that player one will not play A0 when player one's type is zero, then we can essentially delete this part of the game tree. So player two knows that he's never gonna end up at that node. Moreover, player two knows that he's at this node with probability one third. So if he plays D, the lowest payoff he can get is when player one plays A when his type is 12, which means that the expected payoff that player two gets by playing D is one third times nine plus two thirds times six. So it's four plus three, seven. The payoff player two would get by playing C, given that he knows that he's at this node with probability one third is one third times zero plus the highest he can get is when player one plays a12, when his type is 12. So it's two thirds times nine, which is six. So given what player two knows, the highest expected payoff from C is six, and the expected payoff from D is at least seven. So D dominates C. So then we can rule out that player two is gonna play C. So C is dominated. And we can of course see that directly as well from the Bayesian normal form. Seven beats six, nine beats zero. But I wanted to show you this in the context of the Bayesian game, rather than looking at the Bayesian normal form, which you're used to doing. Now, if we ruled out that player two is gonna play C, for player one, we've figured out that he's gonna play B0 when his type is zero. So we just need to figure out what player one is gonna do when their type is 12. So we compare A12 versus B12. Player one knows that player two is gonna play D. By playing A12, player one gets a payoff of three. By playing B12, player one gets a payoff of six, conditional on their type being 12. So when their type is 12, they would prefer to play B rather than A. Therefore, in the equilibrium, both types of player one will play B, and so the strategy will be B12, B0, and player two will play D. We can again see that from the Bayesian normal form as well. Six beats four, so this strategy is dominated. That leaves us with the Bayes-Nash equilibrium, which is B12, B0, and D. The reason we know that this is the unique Bayes-Nash equilibrium is because when we drew this Bayesian normal form, it's the only strategy profile that survived iterated removal of dominated strategies.
The main solution concept here for these Bayesian games is the Bayes-Nash equilibrium. And the idea is that you do the best thing given what you know. So it's a natural extension of Nash equilibrium to Bayesian games. 